What's up everybody? Supreme Decisions here and today it's a little rainy still down here in Georgia. But I want to come to you guys and give you a little bit of a little nugget. Because I've used this a couple times in the past month. It's worked pretty well. But here's something that most of us have no idea about. And this is also something that can be used when we're having conversations regarding default judgments for something such as child support. Now, the it's actually called the motion to set aside a judgment or a motion to set aside verdict. This is also something that is used very commonly in civil cases where you have big corporations that are in there. But I'm gonna go through a couple of the reasons that you can actually use this motion. You never received a legal notice that you were the defendant in a civil case. Now, this is one of those things where I actually spoke about child support. And it's something I will get deeper into probably later this month and where I'm going to talk about the more exacts of it. Because it's one of those where they'll send it out to where you used to live at or a known address of where you used to be or somewhere they believe you are. And not leaving legal notice does not allow for a default judgment. You have a failure to appear or attend court due to an illness or other circumstances. This is why you have those other legal motions that you need to actually understand how they work, such as a continuance and when to put those in. Because any right that you're waiving must be done in writing. So even if you don't want to allow certain things, you are the master of the ship, so you need to figure out how it's going to be conducted. Here's one of the bigger issues. Problems with your legal counsel and or representation. These might be because of your legal counsel isn't filing motions. Your legal counsel isn't showing up on time. Your legal counsel isn't working on the strategy you want them to work on because they're your counsel. So always remember that. But again, these are things that I'll get deeper into. Extrinsic fraud or mistakes affecting the ruling. Now, just to give you an example of that, sometimes you will have something that is placed on or in the court records that are pretty much not true. Yet, you'll also have someone continue to push that exact same effect, so to speak, through all the way to the verdict. I've had one of those happen, and basically what it is, the liability now falls on the prosecution or the opposing party. Next is misconduct by the person who initiated the lawsuit. These are also things that kind of tie in with the fraud because you can also have them not having standing to actually bring the lawsuit. Had those happen too. And last but not least, the court had no jurisdiction to make the ruling. This is generally something that also has to be challenged prior to the ruling. And it's generally done through a motion. But these are all things that you can use as grounds to set aside a judgment. Remember, anytime you're using something, you must know the foundation of what it is. Now, I didn't go deep into a lot of these. These individual things will be more in-depthly talked about or spoken of in the master class. So you guys start joining. We're going to start having a lot of the extra stuff put up. I'm creating a website for that. So we're going to have places for you to go and be able to kind of flourish with that. So don't forget to support the channel. Join the channel. Got three different tiers. Support the podcast. 99 cents, $4.99 or $9.99 per month just to keep it going, keep it growing. And last but not least, the new merchandise is falling ASAP. So start picking up your Supreme gear. And Supreme Decisions, out.